Okay, part two of lesson four. We're still looking at remainder theorem. And this next example is, I gotta say, probably one of the more difficult uh, ones when you're doing remainder theorem or what's coming up factor theorem. So they're asking for find the coefficients of D and C, but I gotta say, this would be a test question, okay? Expect one of these on your test. Okay, so find the coefficients of d and c in p of x equals yada yada. You'll notice d and c are the coefficients in there. Okay, and before we go any further, because I don't want the same mistake happening, let's check x to the 4. Oh, but we're not doing synthetic division, right? Another good reason why to do the remainder theorem, right? Okay, uh, if the remainder is negative 41, when divided by x plus 3, Okay, well, we know what to do with that, right? x plus 3 equals 0, which means solving for x, x would equal negative 3. Knowing that the remainder is negative 41 when we divide by that, we know p at negative 3 then would equal our remainder, negative 41. Okay, good. Oh, keep reading. <laughs> and the remainder is 74 when divided by x minus 2. More information. All right, great. Let's uh, do the same thing with that. x minus 2 equals 0. Solve for x. x would equal 2. So that means p at 2, subbing 2 in for x using remainder theorem, would give you the remainder for that, 74. Okay, so here's the scoop. You're probably wondering, why are we giving this information twice? Well, let's test it out. So we've got p of x equals 2x to the 4 plus dx cubed minus cx squared plus 5x minus 8. Okay, and let's sub in p at negative 3. And put everywhere you see x, you're putting in negative 3. Alrighty. Plus 5 times negative 3 minus 8. Whew, long one. Okay, and we're going to simplify that. But p, we know p at negative 3 is actually equal to the remainder. So we're going to replace that with the remainder, negative 41. Okay, so I want you guys to simplify the right-hand side as far as you can, um, and then we'll check and see if we have the same answer. So pause your video now, please. Okay, one thing I want to point out, please check your answer here, first of all. Um, well, we're not quite to the final answer yet, but um, one thing I want to point out, when you have a negative base on your power and your exponent is an even number, you should end up with a positive. If it's an odd number, you should end up with a negative, right? Negative times negative times negative is negative. So that's why this term is negative 27d. This term Negative 3 squared is positive 9, but there's a negative in front, so you just simply keep that, negative 9c, yada yada. Okay, so you'll have this. Now we want actually all the constant terms together on one side. We're, so we're going to subtract 139 over to the other side to get, let's see, they'll both be negative, so we, it's really like adding. So negative 180 equals negative 27d minus 9c. Those are really ugly numbers. Um, if you look at those numbers, you'll notice, first of all, they're all negative. So we could divide both sides by negative. But also, they all have 9 as a factor, right? 18 can be divided by 9. So 180 will be able to be. Um, 27, 9, all of those. So let's all divide both sides by 9. And the numbers will become much nicer. OK, so when we do that, we will get negative 20 equals negative 3. Oh, we're dividing by negative 9. Ha, ha, ha. Make sure you change that. We want to get rid of those negatives. OK, so 3d plus c. Perfect. That looks great. OK, so now, guess what? We can't really solve for d or c there because we have two variables and only one equation. Or do we have only one equation? we actually were given other information, remember that? So what we can do is sub p at, sub 2 in for x. Um, sorry, we'll just write down the equation first. OK, so we can sub 2 in for x, and the, that, should, that all should equal 74, our remainder. OK, so you guys go ahead and do that. Get it simplified down to something like what we have here. Okay, don't write too big. Um, we still have more work to do after that. Okay, pause your video.
Okay, so we should have been able to get it down to this step at least. And then what did you notice also with this one? We have 40, 8, and 4. Those each can be divided by 4. So if we divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, we would have 10 equals 2d minus c. And trust me, doing that makes the question a lot easier. Okay, now we have another equation and the same two variables, d and c. Guess what? We're doing a system of equations here again, like we did on lesson one. So this time we're going to solve by elimination. Okay, so I'm going to write this other equation underneath this one so that the variables line up. So this comes over here. And if we didn't, basically your goal here before you add the equations is to have the same coefficient in front of one of your variables, but the opposite sign, okay, because we're going to be adding. And look at that, we have that, negative c, positive c. If you don't have that, like let's say we we're trying to get rid of the d's, you would multiply the first equation by 3 and say the qu second equation by negative 2, and that way our coefficients would be 6 and negative 6 on d. Okay, so we're all good to go. We add these equations, 10 plus 20, 30, 2d plus 3d is going to be 5d, and then the equation is so simple, we now divide by 5, and we get d is equal to 6. Okay, how do we get c? Well, we can sub d equals 6 back in here. So 20 equals 3 times 6 plus c, that's going to be 18, subtract that over, we get 2 equals c. And there we go, there's our c and d value. Okay, system of equations. Make sure you know how to do that. Let's look at the next page. Okay, the next page we talk about the factor theorem. Okay, but I got to tell you, the factor theorem is really just the remainder theorem. Okay, you already know how to do this. But what they're saying is if the binomial x minus a is a factor of the polynomial um, p of x, if and only if p at a equals 0. So they're basically saying that if it's divided by x minus a, then x would equal a, right? Set that to 0, solve for x, and then you, then you put that in for x in your polynomial, we get, what is this? This should be our remainder, right? So they're really just saying if something's a factor, the remainder is 0, okay? Which makes sense, right? Is 4 a factor of 12? Yes, because 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3 with a remainder of 0. Okay, so that's kind of what they're getting at. 4 is a factor of 12, you get, uh, the remainder is 0. Okay, another way to express this would be to say that a is a 0 of the polynomial function. Okay, so um, kind of a definition there of what a 0 is when you hear that. All right, so I think um, show that x minus 4 is a factor by using synthetic and factor theorem. I think, um, yeah, let's do that. I'll have you guys do that. So over here, um, we're going to be using remainder theorem, right? Same thing. Okay, and then over here, we're going to be using synthetic division. All right, so pause your video. Let's see if we get the same answer. Okay, go ahead and do synthetic division, then unpause, and then we'll do factor theorem again. Okay, so pause. Okay, so we should have gotten a remainder of 0. Okay, using remainder theorem, we're going to, again, sub in the divisor, solved for x, so p at 4. Okay, and you're going to sub 4 in for x. So go ahead and do that. Let's see if we get the same thing. Pause your video. Okay, so when we used the remainder theorem, we discovered that, yes, the remainder was 0. So by knowing, knowing that, we therefore know, if we put p at 4, that x minus 4 is a factor. Awesome. Okay, let's try the next example. Write a binomial factor with integral, meaning integer coefficients, of the polynomial p of x if p at 3 equals 0. So what they're saying is, you recognize, so this tells us that it's a factor. Okay, this told us that we subbed in x equals 3. Let's turn that back into a factor. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides to get 0 again kind of reversing our process from before. So we would have x minus 3 equals 0. Well, guess what? That's the factor, the binomial factor that they're talking about. What it says is x minus 3 is a factor of p of x. Okay, this one a little bit trickier. Actually, I'm going to do it over here. x equals negative 2 thirds. Okay, and we need to undo our solving. So first thing we would do 
is get rid of that 3 on the bottom, okay, and multiply both sides by 3, and we would get 3x equals negative 2. Then, next thing we undo is to add 2 to the other side, okay, so add 2, add 2, and we would get 3x plus 2 equals 0. There we go. That's what we would have started with normally. And so it was divided by 3x plus 2. Therefore, the binomial factor they're looking for, 3x plus 2, is a factor because the remainder here is equal to 0. All right. Now, let's talk about this word integral. Um, basically, to get make sure you get an integer coefficients, you want to do what I did here, which is multiply both sides by 3 if you have a fraction for x, okay? All right, good job. Let's look at example 6. p at 5 equals p at negative 2 equals 0. Determine a second degree factor of the polynomial. Okay, so second degree, that means we've got to have an x squared somewhere. Um, this tells us that x equals 5 or x minus 5 equals 0. And notice this is our remainder. So not only do, was it divided by x minus 5, we know x minus 5 is a factor because the remainder was 0. Okay, do the same thing here. x equals negative 2. Bring the two, negative 2 over by adding 2. Okay, so x plus 2 also is a factor. All right, so what we could do if they're both factors is multiply them together. Okay, x minus 5, x plus 2. Okay, if they're both factors, we can do that. If we expand that, FOIL that out, we would get x squared minus 3x minus 10. That now is our second degree factor that they're talking about. Okay, so in other words, if each one of those were factors, if we multiply them together, then that result is also a factor. Okay, so that's what they're talking about on that one is a factor of p of x. Good. Example number seven. Use a factor theorem to determine which of the following is a factor. Okay, so if we're using factor slash remainder theorem, okay, and they want to know if x plus 2 is a factor, set that to 0, that would mean x would equal negative 2. If we go p, let's call the original thing given here, p of x, okay, then p at negative 2 should equal, if it's a factor, that should end up equaling 0. So go ahead and finish that one up. You're subbing in negative 2 for x. Let's see if it equals 0. So pause your video now, please. Okay, did you guys get negative 90 as well for our remainder? So remember, this is our remainder that we just found out. So does not equal 0, therefore x plus 2 is not a factor. Okay, and it's important to write that conclusion if they kind of say show that it's a factor. All right, you guys go ahead and do B, okay, and let's see if that one's a factor. My guess is yes, because that's the way they tend to do these things, but um, we need to show that using our factor slash remainder theorem. So pause your video. Okay, so we got remainder of 0, and that means, therefore, 2x minus 1 is a factor. Awesome. Okay, let's take a look at the... Last example here, show that 1 is a root of the equation, yada yada, equals 0. Okay, so it's an equation now. And find the other roots. Okay, so a root basically means it solves the equation, meaning if I sub that value in for x, it would equal 0. So we can basically demonstrate that. Let's write that down. Minus 9x squared plus 20x minus 12 equals 0. And if 1 is a root, we're going to replace x with 1. And if it is a root, we should end up with 0 on the left-hand side as well. Okay, so we have 1 minus 9 plus 20 minus 12. So we would have 8 from the 20 minus 12 and negative 8 from that one. So that would indeed would equal 0. So therefore, 1 is a root. Okay, now find the other roots. What they're talking about there, I used up a lot of room there, is you're going to use synthetic division. Now that we've demonstrated it's a root, we're going to use synthetic division to find our quadratic quotient 
kind of our answer. So um, start conserving some space. Oh, part three.